Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick look at this thing here. This is one of the latest versions of the newbie drone Hummingbird. This is the Hummingbird RS or Wraith Spec. Now, lots of other reviewers have already had a go on this. So if you want to get into lots of lots of flight footage, then go and check them out. I've got this one here to have a look at because it has a number of advantages if you are into kind of flying like you stole it over the standard Hummingbird. This is incredibly lightweight. It's only 16 and a half grams, although on my scales, it's just under 16 and a half. And with a battery, it's still ultra light. It has an inbuilt 25 milliwatt only video transmitter, which is perfect if you do want to do some kind of flying around without accidentally using illegal levels of power for your VTX. Blue Jay ESCs on here. Uh, new motors, this, these are part of the new things that's changed on this particular version. These are RS1702 30,000 kV motors, as opposed to the slightly lower kV, slightly different spec versions. These are incredibly lightweight little motors um, with some cute little features. Battery connector is an A30 connector, uh, which is compatible with BT 2.0. They reckon that this needs a 3000 100 milliamp hour 1S battery, although I've been flying on these things here, these two 60 milliamp hour lava batteries, and that seems to be a nicer fit. The 300s feels a little bit heavy, but more of that in a moment. Firmware on here is Betaflight 4.5 KAACK with the RPM limit for spec racing. So if you are into whoops and you want something that's kind of race ready, then it looks like Newbie Drone have got you covered with this model that's really designed to be as light as they can possibly get it and still fly. Key changes from this of the standard Hummingbird. Again, the motors are one of the big things. It's a 1702 30,000 kV motor versus an 0802 25,000 kV motor on the Hummingbird. A30 battery connector on this. It's 4.9 grams lighter. Now that might not like sound like a huge hill of beans in the grand scheme of things, but actually for whoops of this size, that is a big deal. The less weight you can get on something like this, the better it's going to fly. So not only does it have the more powerful motors, it also has a lot less weight. And it's running the Betaflight KACK firmware versus standard Betaflight 4.5 on the normal Hummingbird. F411 based flight controller in this BMI 270 gyro, 25 milliwatt only analog FPV, a BI 600 TVL line camera. ESCs are running Blue Jay, 48 kilohertz, built in Express LRS receiver, a SPI connected sadly not on a UART, so that will limit some of the things you can do with it in terms of the settings. And there are two free UARTs on it, so maybe you can use that for something else. However, I don't see the point of putting new arts on something like this when it's so obviously designed around a particular weight. The Beast Flight configuration looks a little bit unusual and there is a note on the website warning you not to upgrade it and if things get a bit weird to just reset it and calibrate the accelerometer. Um, I've dumped this configuration out into a file. I'll put it as a link below. So if you're playing with one of these and you accidentally uh, do something that you regret, there is that dump file available for you to get it back into some kind of flying state. The other thing as well is that there is uh, the Express LRS receiver in here. Here. It is SPI connected, so just leaving it powered won't put it into Wi Fi mode. All the configurations and settings are done through the Betaflight interface, including adding things like your binding phrase and those bits and pieces too. In terms of the flying, well, surprise, surprise, they've put a lot of time and effort into this. It flies really nicely, hovering at about a third throttle. Flight time is roughly two and a half to three minutes on a 260 milliamp hour battery, depending on how you fly it absolutely tons of power and very, very quiet and very smooth. That lots of power does mean that it might be worthwhile maybe putting a little throttle curve in while you're flying around the house because it does require a little bit of finesse in terms of your throttle to get around places, particularly when you're flying indoors. So I like the fact that Newbie Drone have taken their very good hummingbird and turned it into something specifically designed for those of you that like to race or want to practice flying a very capable quick 1S quad. 
I'm quite impressed with this. This is actually really nice. I'm not a massive fan of whoops. I prefer the slightly bigger quads, but this for these dark nights where you're stuck indoors or maybe it's howling a gale outside or even snowing allows you to keep your muscle memory going between now and spring. There's kind of just enough essential parts on this with the kind of canopy that's made of 3D printed PTFE. Uh, I believe the files are available for that so you can modify and print your own as well, which would be good. It's super lightweight. The couple of weird things, like for example, the wires from the motor onto the flight controller, the, what they've done is it looks like they've just exposed the end of the wires that are part of the windings and actually soldered them onto the edge of the flight controller. So normally on a whoop, you'd see the three wires coming in and it's all done in not only the pursuit of less weight, but potentially in pursuit of less cost as well. But it does mean that if you need to replace a motor on this, you're going to have to be pretty good with your soldering iron. This isn't expensive either. This is cheap and very capable and gives really good value for money if you're after a cheap, fun quad that you can honk around. Spare props in the box, which is a nice touch. I have heard of people getting jello on their cameras and I suspect it's because when you crash, eventually you will kind of bend the props and ultimately bend the frame. So just be careful of that. It does seem to be surviving the knocks I'm giving it here without an issue. Do like the fact that it has a USB port on the bottom. A lot of the flight controllers that I've had in recently for these kind of machines have had some kind of external little board and adapter cable. Although that's fine, I'm not a massive fan only because when you need it, you can never find that right board or adapter cable unless you are supremely organized. Built in Express LRS, built in VTX, this is genuinely a bind and fly. You just need to get your hands on some batteries. Only a couple of things to be aware of with this. It is limited to 25 milliwatts power, so you're not going to get any distance away from yourself before you're going to get into trouble. The antennas are nice linear style antennas, so I would recommend using linear style antennas on your goggles, and that's going to help with reception. Interestingly, looking at the motors, I think they have bushings in them rather than bearings. That again is kind of a cost saving exercise. Uh, the motors seem to be working fine, but just be aware that there are some kind of funky decisions in here to kind of make this as light as possible. And if you do need to replace one of these motors, you are going to have to break out the soldering iron and be careful you don't break any of these very thin wires that are basically just the ends of the windings going onto the flight controller. And the only last comment I'll make is that the camera angle is pretty limited. You can change things around by changing where the holder attaches to the flight controller, but it is pretty limited. Maybe if the files are available, you can kind of tweak and edit them. It's kind of set for quite a, an aggressive rolled over camera up position, but I guess that's what you're going to want when you're going to fly it like you stole it. Now, as I talked about in the beginning, I don't fly these a lot. And although it's really nice, it needs to go to a home for somebody that's going to absolutely love it and fly it and get the benefit out of it over these winter months here in the Northern Hemisphere. Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, just fly it around and have fun. So I'm going to give this one away. So thank you for staying to the end. Standard stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Include the text shown on the screen in the comments and I will do the draw in about a week. Good luck to everybody. And uh, if you are interested in buying kind of a race ready whoop that's really nicely set up out the box, this is definitely worth a look and a great little quad for the money. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.